May the words of my heart, may the words of my lips and the meditations of our heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. This week, moral outcry rang out across religious, social, and political lines as the news sunk in. Since May, the current administration's zero-tolerance immigration enforcement policy resulted in the separation of at least 2,342 children. 2,300 and 42 children from their migrant parents at the U.S.-Mexico border. Placed in chain-linked cages in detention centers, these children, many of which were under the age of 12, were placed in what is being called tender age facilities or baby jails. Outrage and protest ranged from pediatricians religious leaders, employees, former and current first ladies, and leaders of all political persuasions. Former first lady, Laura Bush, publicly condemned the policy in the Washington Post article likening the separation of children from their parents to internment of Japanese American children during World War II. And on Tuesday, Michelle Obama retweeted Mrs. Bush's article and said, sometimes truth transcends political parties. Melania Trump, in her own ineffective way, helped to turn the heart of her husband, the president, to end this death-dealing policy. And when ProPublica released a leaked audio clip of children crying out for their parents in a detention center, something deep within the American soul broke. When the images of children in detention centers went public, the veil between us and them was torn. The cries of these children shook this nation awake. And this trauma has reverberated across our country the visceral reaction is palpable. Even with President Trump's recent executive order ending the practice, we are left with the aftermath. We are left with where to place these 2,400 children. We are left with the challenge of reuniting them to their families. We are left with how to ensure that they receive proper legal representation as minors. Children and parents are left with the irreparable damage of separation. We are left as Americans to grapple with whether or not we really want to be a nation that creates temporary internment camps for families waiting to be processed and deported. We are left as Americans to wrestle with the tension between law and compassion, between our Christian and our American identity. We are left with the moral question, how did we let this happen? How lost is our nation's soul that we allowed this to happen with our tax dollars? How did we allow children to be separated from their parents in the name of national security? In a nation full of Christians, where, where is our moral compass? We are not so different from the disciples who got in the boat with Jesus. Like these disciples, we were following Jesus per usual when what seemed like out of nowhere, a great windstorm arose. We, like the disciples who were fishermen after all, have weathered our fair share of storms. We have seen our way through our own personal, societal, and global times. But like the disciples, Many of us are filled with fear. We cannot remember a storm quite like this. Of all the storms that we have lived through to tell a tale about, something seems different about this one. Harrowing winds have knocked us off course. We thought we knew the direction we were headed as a people in this United States of America. 
Waves that we have not seen for hundreds of years rage against this ship. And like the disciples who have lived through a lot of storms as fishermen, many of us have begun to wonder, how are we going to see our way through this one? We have cried out to the Lord, Jesus, are you asleep? Do you not see what's going on? Your children are perishing. The soul of this nation is perishing. We have ripped the social fabric that we once aspired to honor. The storm has gotten out of control. The water is rising. Our nation is swamped. Calm this storm, Lord. And Jesus, who was asleep in the stern of the boat, heard the cry of his followers and woke up. He came to them and looked at them like they had finally woken up. Jesus, who had been with them through the entire storm, woke up, came to them, and rebuked the storm. Jesus rebuked the storm, that which the disciples did not know if they could weather. Jesus rebuked the storm, that which clouded their vision. Jesus rebuked the very thing, that terrified and threatened to destroy these creatures of God. In his rebuke of the storm, Jesus showed the disciples that he is Lord over all creation. Jesus showed that he is Lord over the storm, the sea, and the wind. Jesus showed that he is Lord over all of its inhabitants. Just like in the whirlwind, when the Lord spoke to Job and asked, where were you when I created everything? Jesus reminded the disciples in this moment of his lordship, and he reminds us to that end that Jesus is lord over Republicans and Democrats. Jesus is lord over children and adults, documented and undocumented people. Jesus is lord over the United States of America and our laws therein. As Lord Jesus rebuked the storm that threatened to destroy this, his creation and said, Peace, be still. And just as Jesus rebuked the storm, as his followers, we are invited to do the same. We are invited to rebuke the storm and say to it, Peace, be still. In our baptism covenant, our baptismal covenant, we promise to renounce the evil powers of this world which corrupt and destroy the creatures of God. We promise to strive for justice and peace among all people and respect the dignity of every human being. As Christians living in this country during this time, we are called to live into our baptismal promises by rebuking this storm and calling it evil. Separating children from their parents is evil and we must renounce it. To rebuke this storm, to renounce this evil, we can do something. We can contact our representatives. We can join a march on June 30th in Philadelphia to demand family reunification and compassionate immigration reform. To rebuke this storm, we can ask hard questions about our own complicity. Am I complicit in this? And if the answer is yes, we may need to be like the 100 employees from Microsoft who, openly, who wrote an open letter protesting the use of their software by ICE that at the time helped facilitate the separation of children from their parents, or like American Airlines or Delta, who refused to relocate these children to new detention centers across the country. To rebuke this storm, we may need to do some hard work and turn inward and confront, the real, and confront in real and honest ways what, if anything, within us, within me, needs to be rooted out. What tilled the soil that allowed this to happen in our nation? Have we made partisan politics an idol? Do we take sides according to our loyalties to partisan politics over and against our first and final loyalty to Jesus Christ, who is Lord over all creation, who is the way, the truth, and the life? To rebuke this storm, we will need to see immigrants as God does, as God's beloved children, 
before solutions of immigration policy are ever discussed. As Christians, we have a moral obligation to rebuke this storm and to commit, to commit to the cleanup efforts that lie ahead. We can make our prayer our action, and our action our prayer. We can demand family reunification and restorative justice. We can be part of our nation's work in repentance and reconciliation. We can be ready and willing to be part of the restorative efforts for these families in the days, months, and even years to come. We can use our resources and our imaginations to figure out ways to show them that they are not alone. As Christians, we are part of Christ's one body that transcends borders. As a many-membered body of Christ, as St. Paul described us, we are part of a body that is in Philadelphia and around the world. Those children that are locked up in internment camps and detention centers, those are part of our body. As Christians, they belong to God, and as members of that same body, they are our children in the Lord. As a nation full of Christians, how are we going to make this right? In the wake of the storm, how is Jesus calling you to respond in thought, word, and deed? Amen.